Hey guys, this is Emilio Ramos with Red Grace Media. Uh, just wanted to uh, post this quick video responding to uh, the events that took place today at our church, Heritage Grace Community Church, um, with uh, the presence of the AHA protesters that were there calling our church to repent because apparently our church is not engaged sufficiently in the battle against abortion. And I wanted to just kind of put out a public statement making it very clear what is our response to what happened today. Well, let me begin first by saying that anybody that comes to our church and is unwilling to identify with another church in the name of Christianity, because these men claim to be Christians, um, but unwilling to uh, identify who their pastor is, where their church is. Uh, they had, in my estimation, a very low view of the local church. And therefore, to me, these men are well on their way to apostasy. I mean, sadly, I've seen it countless times where people are on the path away from a biblical view of the local church resulting in total apostasy. So these men, if they don't repent, are in fact um, apostatizing from the church. And I would disagree with John Calvin. If the church is not your mother, then God is not your father. Uh, if you don't have a commitment to the local church, and furthermore, I mean, what does it show you about the, the you know, what does it show you about the integrity of these men? The cowardice. Uh, you're not willing to tell us where you go to church? Uh, is that is that really integrity for any ministry? Now, as I understand, AHA is comprised of many, many different people. But let me tell you that now, having heard from many godly, godly brothers uh, in the church that have interactions with these people and who themselves regularly preach against abortion and even do ministry at abortion clinics, um, they don't have anything good to say about this group either. So these folks, from everything I can see, is the, the, these, these people are uh, explosively divisive. Uh, they go inside the church proclaiming themselves prophets of God and telling the church that they have a message for them and that they need to repent and that they need to adopt their philosophy of ministry when it comes to abortion. Uh, I just adamantly reject uh, this movement in its entirety. And I would uh, call anybody that, that I know that is associated with this movement completely rejected as well. Um, ministry in terms of abortion, if you're going to have a ministry, should be ran through the local church under the auspice of the elders. Uh, the church or the, the, the Bible simply doesn't recognize anything else in terms of legitimate church ministry um, these folks were unwilling to tell us who they were associated with in terms of a local church. And therefore, um, you know, it made it really hard to take them serious. Uh, they spoke to some of the brothers and they posted a video online and, uh, they even had clips of John Speed, uh, preaching against abortion. Well, I agree with everything John Speed said about abortion. I preach against abortion all the time. And so I guess these guys were there to tell us that the degree of abortion ministry that we're engaged in is insufficient for them, that they need to see more uh, from us that qualifies as a church that's being faithful. Well, first of all, obviously our standard of faithfulness has nothing to do with AHA, it has to do with the Bible. Um, we follow what the Bible says. And uh, listen, there was abortion in the first century. There was abortion in the Old Testament. The only difference was is they waited for the child to be born before they killed it. But do you see the Apostle Paul standing outside of the church of Corinth or the church of Galatia or the church of Thessalonica or wherever in Ephesus, standing outside the church with billboards saying, go and stand uh, over at the, at the nearest uh, pagan temple to uh, Molech, or did you hear any of the prophets telling Israel to go to the pagans who worship Molech and go 
into their countries and to decry what they were doing. No, of course not. Uh, the whole notion is simply preposterous. Um, you know, the, the other thing, and the reason why I really wanted to put out an official statement on this, is because ultimately what this resulted in was slander. Uh, these men, who really are cowards, um, were slandering our church by saying that we are in sin, that we need to repent, and that their you know, reconstructionist vision for the world is something we need to adopt. Well, neither are true. Um, I've been preaching on the campus of North Texas since 2007, and I have regularly engaged in preaching to students about the evil of abortion, have gotten into many, many heated debates and discussions about that. Um, several people from our church regularly engage in going to the abortion clinics and uh, protesting and trying to persuade women from murdering their children. So at the end of the day, um, this was an exercise in futility for this group of men uh, that came out. And people online are telling me, don't lump the whole group together. There are good and godly and faithful men and women that are involved in AHA. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, I haven't met any of them. Every single AHA person I meet is explosively divisive, is cultic, um, doesn't have a high view of the local church, does not have an elder or a pastor, and when they do, they're usually being divisive in the context of their own church. So I have, sadly, nothing good to say about AHA. And, um, you know, if, if these folks want to do the will of God, um, they had better be very careful how they handle the church of God, a church that is faithfully executing um, the ministry that is given to us in the Word of God. Uh, we know what a biblical church is because God tells us what a biblical church is and what it's supposed to be. Um, a lot of these folks claim to be Calvinist. They claim to be Reformed, uh, and maybe in their soteriology. Well, I can assure you that the Reformers would want nothing to do with the execution of the way that they are involved in ministry. Uh, moving away from their church. I mean, so many passages of Scripture come to mind. A young lady on uh, social media, uh, well, she, she corrected my citation of Titus. It is Titus chapter 3. Um, and in Titus chapter 3, we are told to reject a factious man after the first and second warning. Really, the word means don't have anything to do with them. It says, knowing that such a person is perverted and sinning, being self-condemned. And I just think the men that visit us today are perverted, they are sinning, and they are self-condemned because they are causing division in the church. They're unsettling the faith of the church. And these folks think that they're somehow heroes. They think they're prophets of God going around with a prophetic voice when in fact they're doing anything but that. I would say they're going around giving an occasion for the Gentiles to blaspheme the name of our God as they see these folks opposing the church of God. It's just really sad because uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we are told explicitly, Paul says, if you destroy the church of God, God will destroy you. That is to say that we don't ever want to be in the place where we are standing against the progress of the gospel in a biblical church, uh, especially when it's not done with any integrity, when it's not done with any with any association to the church yourself. I mean, could there be anything more ludicrous than people standing inside of a church saying, church, repent. Oh, by the way, we don't go to church. <laughs> or we have a small group somewhere where we meet in a house, but we don't really have, you know, uh, the structure of a church. We don't really execute the ordinances of the church. We don't really follow the guidelines of a biblical church. And I can tell you, I know that folks are going to are going to agree with me in this that they know many 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 people that are involved in this group that have completely isolated themselves from the church. Um, but you know, let this be a warning to us that any group that's going around saying that everyone else is basically in error except for them. That to me is a true mark of a cult. Um, if it is not a pseudo-Christian cult in the sense of they've committed some sort of heresy, it is definitely a cultic environment. 
and people uh, become uh, sort of, of uh, you know, uh, dependent on this environment. A lot of groups fall into that category, uh, but ultimately, I mean, it is just total gross immaturity. Um, it is slander uh, because our church definitely preaches against abortion and actually has actively and pursues actively um, to cry down the sin of abortion in our culture. Uh, one of the gentlemen in uh, that, that came to our church told one of the one of the deacons of our church, um, what are you doing about it? Uh, do you not care about the children in the, ch in the children's ministry or however he put it? And, you know, AHA needs to understand that in the same way that they are concerned about abortion, understand, guys, there are people around the world that are doing ministry, maybe not in the context of abortion, but they're alleviating other social ills and um, those things are important as well. Um, I know a dear saint of God, um, uh, uh, an older uh, lady, uh, just a dear woman of God, who has devoted her life to rescuing young girls out of sex trafficking. Is she supposed to drop what she's doing uh, so that she can go jump in with AHA and take up a, the campaign of abortion? Um, you know, when you go down this line of thinking, this logic, the, these, you know, whenever you make some sort of social justice issue, um, a social issue, a cultural issue, uh, any particular sin that you might pick up on, whether it's murder or prostitution or drugs or slavery or whatever, and you replace the central focus of the church, which is the proclamation of the gospel, with trying to alleviate human suffering. You no longer have the gospel. You no longer have um, the apostolic message. What you have is humanitarian relief. What you have is a social gospel. And of course, in the time of the Bible, um, Jesus, the apostles, they were well acquainted with the fact that Rome would often discard of their newborn babies if they weren't satisfied with, they'd throw them in a trash heap. But yet Jesus didn't instruct his apostles, go down to the pagan temples of Rome and stand out there and protest what they're doing. No, he actually gave us something even more potent than that. He gave us the gospel of Jesus Christ to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to change people's hearts so that something like abortion uh, would never be done by the individual who has been changed by the gospel. So, you know, it's a very sad thing when you see uh, men, you know, acting in such a disorderly manner, um, all under the guise of false spirituality. Uh, these men think that they're taking up a cause where they become martyrs in a sense and they're actually prophets of God. They have a, uh, a prophetic message for all of us and we all need to change and get behind what they're doing. Well, let me make it very, very clear. We're not getting behind anything that AHA is doing. Uh, we are running a, a biblical church God's way. We're doing God's work God's way. Uh, we're following his word. We're teaching and preaching his word. We are doing and we are committed to the components that make for a biblical faithful church. These men have no commitment to the church and they should be the last people on earth telling us anything about the purity of a local church. And so people online, in my opinion, are just grossly deceived uh, by this group and they're tolerating sin, ironically. Uh, they, they, they want to stand against something as abhorrent as abortion, but in the process, they are tolerating and coddling men who are going into churches and dividing churches and upsetting the faith of the saints, which is a sin. I don't know if you understand, but the Bible says God hates those that cause discord among brethren. And... Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if these men have no fear of God at all when it comes to the church.
to the doctrine of the church. Uh, exactly as one of our men told the gentleman on the video, uh, we disagree on ecclesiology fundamentally, if they have any ecclesiology whatsoever. Uh, so it's a shame. It's, it's a total shame. Uh, pray for the repentance of these men. I pray for the repentance of the whole movement. Uh, if, in fact, as some people are telling me, that the movement actually is comprised of a lot of good, well, where are, where are these good men? Where are these good men coming out publicly and renouncing uh, people like those that came and visited our church? And matter of fact, they visited another church in the area the same day, and they, that's what they do. They go around, they're not part of a biblical church, so they go around other churches and trying to upset the faith of good biblical churches. I mean, it's just, um, it is truly sad and it is truly dangerous, truly divisive, truly dangerous. So I warn everyone and anyone that has any association with AHA, I warn you um, to stay away from this group who is, uh, in my opinion, uh, a group that is sub-biblical in what they're doing and is really leading people away from a biblical view of the church, which to me inevitably leads to apostasy. So... Um, I hope they repent. I hope they turn. I hope they abandon uh, their methods and repent of their sin and uh, that they come back to examining what the Bible actually says a local church is to be and to do. And, um, you know, they quote passages about the orphan and the widow and all of that. Of course, when you see the apostles and what they were engaged in, their concern for the poor, for example, um, their concern for the poor was the Apostle Paul was talking about the poor church in Jerusalem. He wasn't talking about a global humanitarian effort to relieve, uh, to relieve uh, 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 poverty throughout the world. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. So is Jesus out of step with being humane? Um, no, folks, that's because preaching the gospel takes the priority above everything else that we can do in the, in the context of the church. So... Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is what happened today. It came out on our Facebook. Lots of people were throwing in, and uh, I personally have no tolerance whatsoever for for folks like this, groups like this, uh, because they ultimately undermine the authority of the church and they upset the faith of the the faithful believers that are coming to church. And uh, it's just it's just an ungodly practice, one that we hope and pray they repent of.